For the best possible experience, find a quiet place and use headphones. Thank you. I'm a drifter, a lonely ghost walking the roads of an empty world. My path, uncertain. My destination, clear. My old world is gone, fallen to the fires that raged after the first heat burst. As the world burns around me, I find solace in my own icy dreams. Dreams of a life long past. Family, friends, long gone. Everything in my world has the mark of fire, stained black from a sky full of flames. Fire, the great renewer. It brings with it new life after it destroys the old. I knew that my old life would never return, but how could I just ignore that part of me that wished it would? If this renewal ever comes, things will be very different than they once were. At the time, my only goal was to make it back home, to try to find some small piece of me that might remain there just one small piece that I could use to make things better. To make things the way they were. Now things are rarely, if ever, so simple. But I was homeward bound. And nothing would stand in my way. Past Bedtime Studio presents Philip's Apocalypse Based on original material by Michael Johnston. Written by J.B. Stephen with Ben Ajang. Philip voiced by Michael Johnston. Music by J.B. Stephen. Produced by Ben Ajang. Episode 1. Sun's coming up. Better find shelter. I'd been walking along the gravel road for days, seeing a few houses here and there, but it was mostly farm country. It was almost six months since the first heat burst hit, and I'd been walking almost as long. Dirt into pavement, pavement into gravel, gravel back to dirt. The cycle would repeat itself every few days. I was ensnared in its seemingly endless repetition, like a mouse lost in a maze. Sometimes I wondered if I was even making any progress at all. It's 
almost looks as good as any. My first few weeks in this new world were a learning experience. I quickly discovered that it was never a good idea to enter a building unless I made the time to look and listen. All it took was a run-in with a group of crazed survivalists holed up inside of a grocery store to make me learn my lesson. It was the same as most other houses in this world. Run down, paint peeled from violent winds, dust everywhere. And picked clean of supplies. I was ever the optimist, although much less so than I used to be. You never knew what you might find inside of them. Treasures. Or graves. Oh, oh my god. Water. Oh. Life on the road is tough. Any seasoned traveler knows that clean water is the most important thing. I've gone days without food, but one day without water is pushing the limit. Basement time. Basement. Basement, basement, basement. Sleeping in basements had become normal. If I were a basement, where would I be? When the sun rises from the horizon, I've made it a habit to always expect that a heat burst will occur. It's the only safe way to travel, when the sun is on the opposite side of the planet. Even mild exposure to sunlight seems to be dangerous. My cracked and blistered skin those days after the first heat burst were all the reminder I needed that the sun was no longer the warm and comforting entity it once was. <coughs> Alone in the corner of the basement sat a body slumped over a table. Oh, gross. A large machete driven through its back. Somebody didn't like you, I guess. It almost felt like sacrilege, messing with the body of a person. But I really needed a decent knife. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I really need this. Thank you. Rest in peace. Mm, this place is so disgusting. Mm -mm, beggars can't be choosers. Felt like that first night in the cellar. All over again. Another night gone and I'm still here. Alone. Um, 
Sam. I will find you someday. This was the last thing I had to think about before I closed my eyes. My isolated existence was always on my mind, gnawing away little bits of me as each day went by. When sleep finally took me, I would drift away into my own world, my real world, where this was just the nightmare. And we're still together. My dreams are the only thing that keep me going in this new world. The good dreams, that is. Some nights, I see the burned bodies of those who died in the fires. Those murdered for a bottle of water. The sunken faces of those who took their own lives. I hear them crying out. And I wake up screaming. Even the good dreams frighten me. They are rare and sweet, and my soul craves them like a moth to flame. I worry they'll one day burn me up. Routine was a distraction from the void growing inside of me. I wondered if I would be able to feel anything ever again. or something. that moment our eyes locked two pieces of a puzzle a large gray wolf had been searching through the cupboards for food his piercing yellow eyes glowed in the small light of the evening and I stood tall with my machete in hand not moving, hoping that he would eventually get discouraged and leave. I waited for signs of aggression, the curling of the lips, the prickling of the fur, but it never came. Strangely, I didn't sense any hostility in him, only curiosity. Most of the animals I'd come across had been vicious and feral, even domestic ones. But this wolf seemed timid, as if he was from the world before, and was just as lost and confused as I was. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I won't hurt you. I relaxed slightly. Reaching into my pocket, I pulled out some leftover granola I'd stuffed in there the day before. I lowered myself down, still keeping myself at a higher level to avoid an accidental challenge. The wolf sniffed the air, wary of my extended hand. Hey, look. It's good. Here. Slowly, the wolf came to my hand. Yeah, right there. Carefully placing one paw in front of the other, ready to dash off the moment something went wrong. He was nearly an inch away, and I was careful to keep still and relaxed. It was then that I noticed a bottle of water rolling very close to the edge of the cupboard. The wolf immediately sensed my tension. 
smiled. Something I hadn't done in a long time. That moment when our eyes met would be forever burned into my mind. It was the first time in what felt like an eternity since I had any meaningful contact with anything. And I was grateful for it. We were two beings completely vulnerable. And in that moment, I saw into his soul. And he peered into mine. The fire of life was still in his eyes, and I suddenly felt my own. Although small, it was still burning. The desire to see another day, no matter how awful things are. Are you following me? Until we meet again. I hoped that he'd been following me. The thought of his watchful yellow gaze comforted me. It made me feel less alone. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, ten. Ten days worth of water. That's decent. Better hit the road. <laughs> oh, shit! I really needed a better backpack. The encounter with the wolf left me both thrilled and concerned. Looking over to the door, I realized that I must have left it slightly ajar. Enough for a hungry animal to come wandering in. This was the kind of negligence that could end my journey well before I meant for it to end. Still, I couldn't help but feel safe in the wolf's presence. Clearly, he was surviving somehow. And if a carnivore had survived the heat bursts, it's likely he had a food source somewhere nearby. Truth be told, I had enough food to last me a while. But I really wanted to see the wolf again. What you say? Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road. Again, the cycle would start. I pack my things, take as much food and water as I can carry, and start walking, never knowing where my next place to sleep might be or where my next meal might come from. The burden of being a constant traveler. Again, the gravel turns to dirt and then to pavement. But something was different. Somehow, the cycle was less numbing. The encounter with the wolf was at the front of my mind. His shining yellow eyes ever watching me as I journeyed into the unknown. He would always be there with me, even if I couldn't always see him. I had barely felt it before, but now I could feel it deep within my chest. The fire. I wanted to live. This broken world didn't mold the wolf into a vicious beast. And it wouldn't change me either. I wouldn't become an empty shell of who I once was. Had I not met the wolf that day, I wouldn't have made it to where I am today. But that's a story for another time. This was the beginning of my renewal. A small piece of me had returned. Philip's Apocalypse in association with Michael Johnston Media, is a past Bedtime Studio original production. For more information, visit pastbedtimestudio.com.
www.sonicsound.com. <laughs>